the Zara Shimshon um, on Yom Kippur is actually written in his Torah on Parshas Achrei Mos, which is the Parsha of the Torah which discusses Yom Kippur. And on page Ayin, you can see the letter Bays, and that's where we're going to be. And uh, hopefully we'll take these insights, these are very practical insights to apply to Yom Kippur, which is coming up in just a matter of hours. So, 72 hours? Okay. Pasuk, Ki bayom hazeh yechaper aleichem letaher eschem mikol chatosechem. This is the verse of Yom Kippur. In fact, in most of our machzorim, we repeat this verse multiple times throughout Yom Kippur. And just to understand the meaning of the words of this verse. So let's translate first. Ki bayom hazeh, for on this day, yechaper aleichem, will atone for you. Okay, so that's really all it should have said. Then it continues. Letaher eschem, to purify you. Mikol chatosechem, from all your sins, which is a repetition. And uh, as the verse finishes, I'm sure you all know this, lifnei Hashem titaharu, before Hashem, you will become purified. That's the third time. The same verse is saying the same thing. Mm-hmm. So clearly it's not the same thing. So he says, Apostle Kazed, this verse, Ba'kaful umchupal, is repeated and repeated again. But Tzarech Bior, and this needs explanation, Tzitchila Amar Yechaper Alechem. The verse starts, Ba'yom Azad, this day of Yom Kippur, will atone for you. Ba'hakol Bamashma, which sounds like, it's good, it's a total forgiveness. Ba'yom Azad, Yechaper Alechem. Then the verse sort of changes a little bit. Chazar Lomar, Letaher Eschem, Vahainuhach, to purify you. So to purify you sounds like it's also going to be completely. But then the verse clarifies and says, Mikol Chato Sechem, Titharu. You will be cleansed. Mikol Chato Sechem. Hainu nami hach, which is kind of saying the same thing. Umahu mikol, but what's this extra word from all? Hoyu lalomar mechato sechem. It should just say from your sins. Vaod mahu lufnei Hashem. And what does it mean? Before Hashem, you will be purified. V'yesh mm-hmm. lomar. Therefore, the Zera Shimshon would like to suggest the following mechanics of how Yom Kippur works. Dileel Basamach, what's written right before this verse? You all know this verse as well. Ta'anu es nafsho sechem. You're supposed to afflict your souls. The Torah doesn't actually say, don't eat or don't wear shoes. The Torah doesn't tell us these things. The Torah says, on the 10th of Tishrei, ta'anu es nafsho sechem, you should afflict your soul. And we know that the translation of that is that we should be fasting and all the other things. And then it says, V'chal malacha lo ta'asu, and work should not be done, ha'ezrach, the resident, etc. V'achshav, now this verse, which again we're saying, is the most important verse describing Yom Kippur, ba'li tam al ha'omur lamala, is trying to give a reason for the fasting. K'moshu machiach tevas ki, because how many times do you have a verse in the Torah that begins with the word ki? What does ki mean? Because. Or in order to. But really because. Usually it's because. So here we have, and you're going to say this many times in Yom Kippur, as it says in the Torah, ki bayom for on this day. So he explains like this. The Beperik Ches the Yoma, the Gemara in Mesech this Yoma Amrinan says, Gedola teshuva. How great is teshuva? Shezadonos nasu lo kishgagos. That your purposeful sins become accidental sins. Says the Gemara. Aini, that's not true. V'ha'ama reish lakish ba reish lakish said. Shezadonos nasu lo kizichuyos. That your purposeful sins, they become like merits. Why does the Gemara say that the purposeful sins only become like accidental sins. 
Umasik, and we already saw this discussed earlier in the Zerah Shimshon, the famous answer of the Gemara, Kan mi'ava, kan mi'ira. If you do teshuva out of love, then your ag- and purposeful sins become merits. If you only do teshuva out of fear, then your purposeful sins become accidental sins. The inke, and therefore, ha'inoi v'hasiguf. When you feel pain, when you afflict yourself, what happens is, those things, the suffering on Yom Kippur, and this is very important because people complain, I'm hungry, I'm tired on Yom Kippur. Those feelings of pain and exhaustion, those are meant to atone for the pleasure which you took from the sins. And therefore you should welcome you're supposed to welcome that pain and say, if I'm feeling hungry, if I'm feeling tired, if I'm feeling exhausted, you should know I took pleasure from doing bad things and this pain and suffering is hopefully going to cleanse me of that. And the longer and the hungrier and the longer the davening is and the more you have to stand there and, and go through it, the more atonement you get and you have to welcome that. That was a whole year of eating bacon double cheeseburgers made up with one day of fasting? Well, um, that's a good question, but it's the still the suffering, and going through suffering, and that's the way that it works. And the truth is, if someone eats, let's say someone, um, someone ate a really good steak, 10 minutes later, they're no longer enjoying eating it because that concept is worn off. So eating it again is like eating anew. So in the same way, the suffering that I'm feeling in that moment could be the equivalent of all the moments that I had the pleasure, although I'm not fully answering the question. But that's what the Torah tells us, that this suffering, the pain which we feel on Yom Kippur, that's the atonement. However, but that's not tshuva out of love. When you feel pain and you're afflicting yourself so that you can get rid of the enjoyment and pleasure which you took from your sins, that's not tshuva out of love. That's Judgment and fear. Therefore, you hear this? Yom Kippur, the suffering on Yom Kippur, is only going to be like doing tshuva out of fear. Yechaper aleichem. So it's only going to do yechaper. What is yechaper? That's the outermost level. Then Yeshu Yeshuvu Shigagos Levad. It'll turn your purposeful sins into accidental sins. So you should know, even if you just take in and accept the pain of Yom Kippur, that itself will take your purposeful sins and turn them into accidental sins. And then your tshuva takes the accidental No, well, let's see. He's going to take it further. The Amar, then the verse continues. L'tahir aschem, to purify you. Litain tam, that's giving a reason. I'll call melacha lo sasu that you don't do melacha on Yom Kippur. Shazem mora al ha'ava, because there's another focus on Yom Kippur. Not the pain and the suffering of Yom Kippur, but the closeness to Hashem of Yom Kippur. Sha'adam is dabeik bekono, where a person connects to Hashem. By separating yourself and removing yourself from the rest of the world. You spend the whole day connected in your mind to Hashem's service. So besides the pain of not eating and not drinking and not um, wearing shoes and not doing all the other things which you can't do on Yom Kippur, not being able to bathe, Besides that, it's also a day when you separate yourself from the world and you spend time connected to Hashem. That's another level. That's the way the verse says afterwards, to purify you. That's a much higher level to become purified. Because just atoning for you, like washing away, doesn't suggest that you will be completely clean and purified. The first level only shows that the sins are wiped away. <coughs> but if it's just the suffering of Yom Kippur, the suffering of Yom Kippur is only going to take away the outer level of the sin. That's going to be a tshuva out of fear. That's not going to be 
what we really want on Yom Kippur. There's another level of Yom Kippur, which is the closeness that we get to Hashem, that's going to really purify you. That's going to be your tshuva out of Ava. So there's two parts to our avoda on Yom Kippur. Part one is to suffer. To suffer, that takes away the negativity of our actions and wipes it away to make it so that we are not purposeful sinners. But then, if you can really make the most out of Yom Kippur and use it to come close to Hashem, then that becomes your tshuva out of love to truly purify yourself. However, Amnam Lefishiyesh Svara Shlishis, there's a third level. Huva Vaperish Al Shech Al Tehillim, which is cited by the Al Shech, Al Pasik Ashrei Nesui Pesha. Fortunate is the one who bears the sin. He says there the Al Shech, Shelo Am Ruzadonus Nasa Lo Kizachuyos, that when can an, a purposeful sin become a merit? Ela Al Avonos Velo Al Pshaim. He says only if you do sins on purpose, but you didn't do them for the sake of rebellion against God. Shahapshaim, but the Al Shekh says something very difficult. The Al Shekh says, Pshaim, the really rebellious ones, those sins which you say to God, I don't care, I'm going to do it. And you're not doing it out of desire or being overwhelmed by your incline- inclination. You're doing it because you want to rebel against God, the al says that they can never become a merit. Something like that can't become a merit. So he says, L'chein Amar, that's why the Torah adds in this verse, Ki bayom alechem, mikol chatoseichem, from all your accidental sins, shachatois ratzalomar shgagos, he says, your Accidental sins, meaning your shogeg, mikol hashgagos afabas machmas abshaim. So he says an unbelievable thing. He says, what's going to happen is, you're going to do your rebellious sins. And what's Yom Kippur going to do? The most Yom Kippur can do is turn them into shgagos. Oh, the tshuva can turn them into shgagos, into accidental sins. But then you can do a new tshuva on accidental sins. So he says, if you can do such a high level of teshuva that it reaches lifnei Hashem, it comes before Hashem. The hainu at kisei hakavod. If you bring your teshuva before the heavenly throne, the hainu o me'ava, either by doing it out of love, oh, ready for this, betzibur. If you do tshuva with a community, with a kahal, if you get together as a group and do tshuva, then you can take your um, rebellious sins, which the most your tshuva could do is turn them into accidental sins, either doing tshuva out of love or doing tshuva with a tzibur, with a community, that can actually raise up even those and bring them up. Kedamrin and Hassan be Perikhes the Yoma, the Gemara says, Shuva Yisrael ad Hashem Elokecha. You should return all the way to Hashem. Says the Gemara, Ad can have two meanings. Ad can mean up to, or Ad can mean including. Which one is it here? The Ad ve Ad Bechlal. Is it Ad and including, meaning that you can literally come before Hashem? Or Ad, or does it mean up to, Velo Ad Bechlal, but not including? Says the Gemara, Ha V'yachid. If you are alone, the most you can reach is up till the throne of glory, but not all the way. But if you have a tzibor, so listen to this beautiful reading of the verse. It's, it will say, "Sfasayim yushak." Right, your lips could kiss this pshat. This is how the verse reads: "Ki mikol On this day, um, it will atone for you. For all your chataos, for all your accidental sins. Lifnei Hashem. He says that extra word, tit haru. Tit haru is plural. Uh That if you get together with a community, with a tzibur, and you daven, then everything. So, 
Right? It atones for you. Mikol chato sechem. But in order to get the call, in order to fix everything, that lefnei Hashem titaru, you need an entire tzibur that comes before Hashem. He's saying on Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur. So through other year, not only with which is very important, also doesn't Right. So all the year, Tzibur also has this. But he's saying this verse, which is talking about Yom Kippur, is telling you you'll get atonement on Yom Kippur. But there are limits. But if you have a Tzibur that does teshuva. Then he says, "The Mishum Hachi." This is the reason. On the Yoshvim Bebeis Aknesses Kalayom. This is why davening is all day long. We sit in shul all day, not just because there was so much to say. We have to find excuses to keep us in shul. But Tzibur, because we need to be with a Tzibur, the Vukim Ba'Kadosh Baruch Hu, connected to Hashem, a whole minion. Im tefilaseinu with our prayers, kedei shetiyah hatishuva me'avo uvet sibur, and that has the power to cleanse us. If we do this with a sibur, by the end of Yom Kippur, we're cleansed of all of our sins. What a beautiful shot! It still is only the kind of sins that you sin against God. If you did bloshon hara, it isn't going to help. It isn't going to help that. That's right. That's right. Um, and not only that, but as we discussed in the past, every time you sin against someone else, there's two parts. You sin against another person, but it's also an Avera in the Torah, so you sin against God. And uh, the way it seems from the commentaries is that you don't even, you can't even atone for the Ben Adam Lamakum between you and God part until you ask forgiveness of someone else. Yeah. I'm quite confused. Are we... I mean, the day is about kapara. It's not about teshuva. I don't think those are the same things. And mm, and yep. the, and I, 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 your premise, your premise needs to be questioned. You need you, there's a machlokas in the Gemara whether whether Yom Kippur needs teshuva. We pass in that you have to do teshuva on Yom Kippur in order for it to work. So, but, but the formula we use on Yom Kippur regarding individual sins is not consistent with the formula of the Rambam about what you have to do to do teshuva, because nowhere do we say, and we regret this. Uh, no, we do. We, we say that. Oh, uh, nowhere, excuse me, nowhere do we say, we will not do this again. Uh, well, we, we don't quite say it in those words, but because uh, the, the, the davening itself has the words of vidui, but we have, uh, at the end, we say, uh, Hashem, please give us the power that we should not go back to these sins so we do kind of we do kind of say it after the vidui at the end. We say collectively, sort of, for all of the above, but right. we don't say it individually, specifically. So it's not like we're really owning it. Mm. Okay, I mean that could be that could be questioned. I think that if we would look um, deeper into the vidui, we would find that there's certainly place for all of that. But it could be that you have to do that on your own. If if uh, if the davening only gives us certain sections of uh, the tshuva is definitely required. Now, uh, you're also um, making another assumption, which might or, or might not be correct, that Yom Kippur requires the same kind of teshuva, which is usually required. <coughs> that's that's an assumption which some would question, and but uh, but it seems from everyone that you need some level of teshuva on on Yom Kippur. And and Teshuva and Kapara are not the same thing, correct? Well, Kapara comes on Yom Kippur to us according to the way we Paskin if we do Teshuva. So they're not the same thing, right? I'm, I'm kind of wondering if you, let's say you compare two people, two Yidin, one who was in the time of the Beis HaMikdash, and then when you had the Kahanim, you had all the, 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 the Yom Kippur, which is all elaborate, and then you have a yid, let's say, um, a thousand years later. They both have the same sin. How does it work? Over there, the coin seems to be doing all the work. He goes into the kodesh and what, what, what's, what's the question? Are you asking how we, how do we atone without the korbanos? Well, that's actually. How do you see that? Do, do, you, do you see that that person had an easier? Time going through, just going through the no, that's, that's a big zugir, the question of whether, whether today, we, whether our avoda, we, that's what we're doing. The Musaf of Yom Kippur 
is meant for us to um, read the description of what the Kohen did on Yom Kippur so that we can, through our mouths, um, fulfill the same thing. And the, the Chazan is like the Kohen Gadol. That's why you can't just send anyone up there. You have to send someone who you would want should be your Kohen Gadol. Uh, that's, uh, that's a big deal. Um, and uh, <coughs> now the question is how much does our davening accomplish relative to the actual avodah? That's, that's a whole big discussion. But then you have the other side which argues that since we don't have the base amigdash, the expectations on us are lower. So that's a big, uh, big discussion. All right, let's turn to page Ayan Zion. So is davening at Tibor was the ultimate? All right, all right. He says that third level, which you can't fix, that, that being with a Tibor. Uh-huh. Right. Yeah, but he's saying you need that the tzibur should sort of be unified in coming close to Hashem, and you know sometimes you have to that 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 would require you know just the right speech before in the ela. I've I've been in shuls where where when the the right speech is given before in the ela and the ela is three decibels higher. Mm-hmm. Um, That's true. Right. A hundred decibels higher, right? Three levels higher um, than than it is before. So you need something to bring the people together, where they feel that sense of uh, if this is a serious time. We're all connected to Hashem. Okay. On page I in Zion, in the on the in the right column, in the second paragraph. Now, anyone who's learned the Mishnah in Masech des Yoma, which is the Mishnayos of the laws of Yom Kippur. The end of the Mishnayos in Yoma finishes with a famous statement from Rabbi Akiva, which he must have taken from the song. Amar Rabbi Akiva, said Rabbi Akiva, Ashrechem Yisrael, how fortunate are you, the Jewish people. Lifnei mi atem etaharim, I'm saying it outside. Um, before whom are you being purified? Meaning on Yom Kippur. Umi metayar eschem, and who's purifying you? Avichem Shabashamaim, your father in heaven. And then he quotes these verses that say the Omer, as the verse says, Mikve Yisrael Hashem, which literally means Hashem is the hope of the Jewish people, but Rabbi Akiva reinterprets it as Ma Mikva Metairas Atmeim, just like a mikveh, and instead of reading the word mikveh as hope, he's reading it as a mikveh. Th- yeah, so um, just like a mikveh is metaher, purifies those who are tameh, Afa Kadosh Baruch Hu Metairas Yisrael Hashem is the mikveh of the Jewish people. Hashem purifies the Jewish people. So Rabbi Akiva finishes the Mishnayas and Masechtes Yoma by telling us, you should know that um, you're becoming purified before Hashem, and Hashem is, so to speak, your mikvah. And the Zerah Shimshon wants to give us some understanding of what so that immersed means. Immersed in prayer is like being immersed in the right. right. So, <clears throat> the challenges that we do have, the, the other 364 days of the year, it is basically Hashem send us through His mikvah, after what we've done, yeah. No, the 364 days of the year, we have a lot of issues, right? Right. Is it the same process? No, he's saying this is Yom Kippur. On Yom Kippur, Hashem becomes our mikvah, and we immerse ourselves in Hashem, and we come out purified. That's an incredible concept, and that's what he's going to try to explain I'm sure here. It'll only take a minute. How is mikvah, the mikvah, the same shorish as mikveh? Well, we say kaveh el Hashem. Right, Kaveh Hashem, hope to Hashem, and that's it. Really, is the same thing. That's that's what it is. No matter how far you've lost, you can start again, and that's what a mikvah means. Uh-huh. Right, that's what so a mikvah mean, is. Right, right the, it, um, the discussed is a famous uh, sefer achinuch that says when you go down to the mikvah and you come out, it's like emerging from the womb again. You're, you're a new person, and that's that's mikvah. That's but <laughs> okay. Let's see. Vaod bederach acher. So he has a previous explanation, but now he's giving another explanation. How fortunate are you, the Jewish people, before whom are you being purified? Hashem wants you to come before him. Even though you've sinned, and you've blemished and transgressed his honor. He says, before we even go any step further, understand this, that no matter what you've done, Hashem wants you, like Uncle Sam, Hashem wants you. Hashem wants you 
to come before him regardless of what you've done. There is not a single person who can say, I've done too much and Hashem probably does not want me. It doesn't exist. Hashem said, come before me. And it's not only that God accepts you, Hashem actually busies himself to pu- purify you and cleanse you. Hashem does the cleansing for you. You come, can you imagine this? That, that um, someone says terrible things about you and does terrible things to you and uh, you know, um, throws uh, you know, things at your house, throws things at you, hurts you, does all kinds of things. And then... You call that person before you and say, I forgive you. Let's work on ways that you can be completely cleansed. It's amazing. We rebel against Hashem all year. And Hashem says, come here so that I can cleanse you. It's like the eye, the needle, and open the door. Shehu shetashuvu. Hashem waits for your teshuva. Kedi'isa b'chagiga perikama, as the Gemara says, Eved shirapo metzapeh leroso yisrachik mimenu. If you have a servant who's invited to come and speak to the master, should he distance himself? V'ayin sham. V'nois and hem siyu, and Hashem helps you. What an amazing gift we have. This is Adam Malakum. We assume so. V'zehu, that's what it means. Umi metaher eschem, who's purifying you? Avicham sheba shemaim, your father in heaven. Sheim lo hoyu shaleach lanu ezra mikodesh, because everybody knows. If Hashem wouldn't help you do teshuva, lo hoyu beyadeinu koach lashuv betshuva shalema, we'd never be able to do a complete teshuva. V'zehu, that's what we mean. Mi metaher eschem, metaher eschem davka, he purifies you, and you're going to say this line on Yom Kippur too, Shenemar, v'zarakti aleichem mayim tahorim. I sprinkle on you the pure waters. Hashem, you're going to say this many times in Yom Kippur, and focus on those words. When Hashem sprinkles on us the purification waters, it's Hashem who's purifying us, even though we're the bad guys. But I'd like to ask, Why over here, in this verse, is the verse, and then the verse continues, And from all your gilulim, now usually we translate gilulim as your um, your dirtiness. But umayshna hasam, the karlu chatay subshayim. But how come if you look in the Torah, the Torah doesn't use that, those words. The Torah uses the words chatay subshayim. Dechsev ki bayom as a yechaper letayr eschem mikol chatusecha. So he says this is a verse from it's from Yechasko, right? And there it says, um, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is to tire us from our gilulim. And in the Torah, it uses the word chatas upesha. V'yesh lomar. So he brings an interesting answer, explanation to this. The Beperik Hei de Mikvois, there's a Mishnah in Mesechtas Mikvois, which discusses, obviously, the halachas of a Mikvah. Tanan, it says there, Gal shenitlash ubo arba imsa. If a person is hit by a tidal wave, which has 40 saw of water in it, the halacha is that you have to go into a mikvah which has at least 40 saw. If water lifts itself up from the mikvah and splashes on you, it doesn't work. But if you have a wave of the ocean which is still attached to the ocean on one end and it washes over you, that is a kosher mikvah, assuming that it's such a big wave that the, throughout the whole, while you're completely immersed as the wave passes through you. If someone surfs through a wave, that person has gone to the mikvah. So tsunami is cleansing the... Uh... Well, tsunami is a mikvah, yeah. V'nafal ala adam, if it falls on a person, v'ala kelim, or on a vessel, tahorim. What about intent? Oh, what about intent? Excellent. What about what? So, Pirish Arav. Yeah, I wasn't intending. I was suntanning. So, Pirish Arav. So, says the Bartanura. Tahorim lechulim belvad. It only allows you 
to have chulin, meaning to be tahar, on the lowest level, you can have Yom Kippur for that, you can have, it's good for chulin, meaning that you're now able to eat food without contaminating <coughs> it and making it further tamay. The chulin la boy kavana, because just get to get back to status quo, you don't need intention. Avon miser, but to be able to eat miser, not to make it tamay. Ula truma. Or to be able to eat truma. Umikalshkein le kodesh. And certainly, if you want to be on the level where you can eat of the sacrifices, lo tahar it doesn't work. Until you're in, until you intend. So, I don't understand. So, if you, you can be in neutral, but not pure? Well, you are purified from your impurities in terms of being back to the regular status which you are, which you're able to eat food without imparting um, tuma onto it. But we know that before, to do something holy, you need um, immersion with intention. I see. But Israel wasn't able to eat these Kadashim anyway. And there are certain Karbanas that you can eat. Um, Kadashim Kalim, Shlomim, and and toda and these things, that can be eaten by Yisrael. Uh-huh. Uh, you, uh, co- uh, you need a coin to eat chatas and asher. Right. Okay, so he says, Im Cain, beautiful, HaKadosh Baruch Hu Yizrak Aleinu Mayim Tahorim. What does the verse say? Hashem will, not Hashem will immerse us, Hashem will sprinkle on us purification water. Hainu Shiyyeh Bam Shir Letaher Afilu Shlobi Yediyaseinu which means that on Yom Kippur it's like the wave crashes over us with 40 saw of water Hashem sprinkles us with this wave Afilu Shlobi Yediyaseinu which will help even without our knowledge and our intention, our action To put us to neutral Right Bezos HaTvila Toel it's going to help Lahasir Mimenu Kal HaTumos it'll remove all the impurities to remove the negativities of the persecutions against us. That helps us become pure to remove the Tumah. But as I'll explain, it's not enough. So it's beautiful. Because the, the Rabbi, we'll see Rabbi Akiva suggesting mikvah, but in the verse it actually says, I will take of my mikvah and sprinkle it upon you. I will throw it over you. And then <laughs> even if you're busy focusing on something else, you focused on your hunger or who's winning today's game or whatever it is that you're thinking about during Yom Kippur, that water will sprinkle over you, metaphorically speaking. Uh, you'll be purified of the tumas and there'll be no persecution. Sorry, I keep prosecution. It sounds like redundancy. Because yeah. if your pain and your suffering is brings you to neutral so that you can have your your sins be uh, their um, accidental so that you can then dive in to get more in the seaboard, then this is just like a was this a backup system? It, it not, this also brings you to neutral because you're not tahor enough. Now this going is how, this is how it works. This is what you know, happens on Yom Kippur. When you come to Yom Kippur and you you fast and you're pain and you're suffering, so then you get this lower level of atonement. How? How does that work? Oh, so I he's see. saying because it's not a real mikvah, Yom Kippur is the wave washing over you. It's a combination of the pain and this. No, this is what happens. The pain is what you're doing. He is describing what Hashem is doing. What's going to happen is, on Yom Kippur, Hashem is, I will pour it over you, and that will cleanse you. That's what it says, from your impurities, from your dirtiness. Meaning, it's not going to make you shiny, and spick and span. It'll just remove all the bad stuff, all the dirt. Kaloma. Shatvi lezu, this sort of semi-immersion, enum elas ela lechulin. It only helps for the lower level that you no longer imp- impart impurity. Shetis raching miosa adam atum, it will remove the tumah from you. Avladayin ene yachol lilbosh big day kodesh. You still can't put on your holy clothing. Velavo ala kodesh, you still can't enter the holiness. Velachol betruma vekadashim, to be able to eat of truma and kodesh. Says Rabbi Akiva, no, no, no. How fortunate are you, the Jewish people? Mikve Yisrael Hashem. Hashem is not that wave that throws water over you. He's a mikvah. Ma mikvah. 
Because once you've removed all the dirt from yourself, that's what you have to do. Before you go into the mikvah, you're supposed to take a shower, you're supposed to scrub away all the chatzitzas, all the separations, all the objects which get in the way. But after that, Yenoach Lachem Litvo Bemikvah Bedas Lachona, then you'll be ready to dip in the mikvah in a proper mindset. Kedeli Hitahe Lachuma Lakodesh Anyam Kippur. You're supposed to say to yourself, I don't want it to just be a mikvah where my sins are removed. I want to come out after Yom Kippur ready to accept Kedusha, ready to accept being able to partake of Truma, the portion of Hashem, a new person with new plans and new goals. I now want to be able to be a holier Jew. That's what the Torah is talking about. Ki bayom alechem. Meaning, a person, right now, we're holding a few days before Yom Kippur, person says, what? I'm supposed to fix 364 days or 300 and, um, 350 something days? What was it? 380 um, something days? Uh, I'm supposed to fix all that? It's impossible. How do I know it's impossible? It would be difficult for us at the end of each day just to fix all the things we did wrong that day. If we would go at the end of the day and look at the list, if we were to make a list of all the things we'd done wrong, we didn't say this so nice to this person, we didn't focus on this part of davening, we didn't do enough learning, we did every day. And at the end of the day, we would be overwhelmed by what we've done each day. And now we're supposed to approach Yom Kippur and fix a whole, a whole year's worth of thinking? The case said, yes, so what should someone do? Mishihir belachto lekalkel. Someone who has sinned many times and ruined things. And the answer is an amazing thing. Shakadish Baruch Hu hifli Hashem gave us the most amazing kindness, the most amazing mercy. <laughs> He gave us this holy day of Yom Kippur. It will, if you do Teshuvah on Yom Kippur, it will fix everything. All those things which you couldn't cover in one day. For that day. In this one day, that's the gift of Hashem. Yom Kippur covers and takes away all your sins. Ki bayom yom That's the power of this day. That's what Rabbi Akiva says, Ashrechem Yisrael. Do you understand? Do you appreciate how amazing it is? Lifnei mi atem metaharim umi metahir eschem lechen lo amar hayom azeh. But however, it doesn't say hayom azeh this day. El ba yom azeh yechaper halechem. It has to be ba yom azeh. You have to be in the day. You have to immerse yourself on the mikvah, which is Yom Kippur, on the mikvah, which is Hashem, mikveh Yisrael Hashem. You have to put yourself and give yourself over to Hashem on Yom Kippur. Could you imagine what Yom Kippur looks like if a Jew walks into shul and realizes he's entering into the mikvah, into the presence of Hashem, impure, and then he's going to emerge after Yom Kippur, a completely changed person? Where you come face to face with Hashem, and he says a beautiful mashal. We know the verse in Mishle says that Kamayim Panim al Panim Kain Lev Ha'adam, right? Meaning like water reflects. Why did Hashem make that water should reflect? He says, because the mashal of it is to realize that when you are in the mikvah, Kamayim hapanim lepanim, that's another way of coming face to face with Hashem, is itself a mikvah. But yachtav ledvaku, and then when you're connected to Hashem, like water creates this reflection, and you should see yourself standing before Hashem, like a person who's facing the water and sees a reflection in the water where he's panim bepanim, that's a remez to the panim bepanim which we experience on Yom Kippur. Lifnei Hashem titharu and says now different words. Not before Hashem shall you become purified. Lifnei Hashem as in panim b'panim face to face with Hashem. Maybe that could be why it says one of the emotions of Yom Kippur is tears, sincere tears. It's that water. Man, very good. Right, that's the that's the internal waters representing right. 
So I did the Fnei Hashem Titaru. So we, uh, both of these Torahs, and we'll stop with this, are, are both on this trying to explain the greatness of Yom Kippur based on this verse. But you know, both of these are sending the same message. The first one is that you need the tzibur. The second one is to recognize that this concept, yeah, you could have the lower level. You have the lower level of mikveh. Just show up in shul and sit there and listen to the chazan and, and get through Yom Kippur, and you'll, you'll get this lower level. Of, of mikvah, but don't settle for that. Make Yom Kippur an experience where you enter. Lifnei Hashem, panim b'panim, where you come face to face with Hashem. Make it a true experience, and then the Yom Kippur process elevates you, not just to the level where you no longer impart Tumah, but to a place where you're now on the level to achieve um, Kedusha for Truma and Kodesh. How does the Selichot period contribute to this, uh, all this process? Well, we're assuming it's all preparation. Uh, that's the simple. He's not getting into it. It, it also it's part of the teshuva process because you have to come to Yom Kippur ready. You can't you can't walk in off the street and just do teshuva on Yom Kippur. You have to work on yourself. Like people should be working now. This is uh, the ten days of teshuva. There's ten days of teshuva because on Yom Kippur you have to already have to understand what are you what am I going to say on Yom Kippur. But the real kapara, the real atonement, that happens. Thank you.